What's up YouTube? Uh, today I wanted to go over uh, what camera bodies and lenses you would want to invest in if you're trying to do sports photography um, as a profession. Uh, so first thing we're going to go over would be um, camera body. Uh, I'm using the Canon 1DX. Uh, if you're shooting Nikon, the equivalent is D4S or D4. Um, and the, the reason why I choose the 1DX is uh, because currently it's Canon's uh, highest end model for uh, sports photography and wildlife. Um, and it, it's just a, a really, really good camera, uh, as expected for, however, for how much it costs. Um, now the features it has uh, that make you uh, love it so much is the autofocus system that it has is just phenomenal. You have a lot of customization with this camera, uh, especially when you're shooting the AI servo. Uh, you can change and tweak how the autofocus uh, works. Uh, has unlimited amount of customization. It's it's a really nice camera. Um, the it's full frame. Uh, it can shoot at very high ISOs with no problem. Uh, you just you hardly can even see any grain in your images, and which is great. Um, you get lots of customization. There's plenty of reviews online of the camera. You can, if you want to see more detail on the features it has, you can go ahead and look at it. But the main thing is the autofocus system, the customization, um, and really just the build quality of it. It just, it, it's very, it's like a tank, and it can just handle, it can handle a lot. It's built to last, and it's built to handle all types of environments and situations you get yourself in: rain, snow, sandstorm, <laughs> whatever extreme condition there is, it can handle it. Um, so if you're on a budget and you're you're not able to afford this, uh, I think right now, uh, uh, as of right now when, when this video was released, uh, it goes for about, it's still like 6400 new and used is about between uh, 4500, 4800. Um, I don't see any issue with you going with used. Uh, that's what I do for pretty much everything I get. I always buy used. Just make sure you look at the uh, photographs provided uh, on like eBay. On eBay, check out the photographs of the product. Make sure it's in good condition. Uh, look at the, the description. Read about it. See how many uh, shutter counts have been put into the camera, and just the overall condition of it, and just make a decision from there. Uh, if you're doing eBay, I always go off of their feedback and see how many items they've sold just to make sure they're a reliable seller. So, just to protect yourself. So, if you're going to go used, check out eBay and make sure the seller is legit. And that's what I would recommend. Uh, if the used price uh, is still too much money, um, either save up, because I'm telling you, if you can save up and get this thing, just do it. It's well worth it. It's a great camera. If it's just not going to happen for you right now, and you just want to get out there and shoot, uh, 1D Mark IV is great. You can get it used, I think, for about 2,500, maybe 3,000. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's around 2,500-ish used. Um, and the main difference, the they're both built really well. They're both weather sealed. They're both uh, just great cameras. Um, the main difference is the 1DX is full frame, and the 1D Mark IV is 1.3 crop. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that basically just means it magnifies your focal length uh, times 1.3 on the uh, 1D Mark IV, uh, or, and as opposed to uh, full frame, you get the actual focal length you're using. So I'm really bad at math, but basically you would take 400 millimeters, for example, if you put that on the 1D Mark IV, you would multiply the focal length, so 400 millimeters times the cropped, which is 1.3, and that's the actual focal length you're getting. Um, there's more info on cropped versus full frame. If you want to check that out, just check it out on another YouTube channel. People have plenty of videos on that stuff with all that information on how that all works. Uh, and then on a full frame, if you use a 400, you're getting 400. Um, but I just, I, I would highly recommend the 1DX if you're in a budget, 1D Mark IV, 1D Mark III, uh, even a 7D. Uh, personally, I don't like the 7D because when I used it, it could have just been a bad camera that I had that actual, like that physical, camera itself could have been bad, a dud, but I had a lot of issues with the autofocus system. And, and I know for everybody the uh, noise performance 
or the ISO performance on that camera is not that great when you go up pretty high, like 3200, 6400, it starts to get pretty bad. And you're gonna be hitting those ISO ranges when you're shooting night or indoors, it's just gonna happen. So I would just highly recommend a 1D series. If you're shooting Nikon, D3S, uh, D4, D4S, one of those is totally fine uh, if you're able to afford it. Um, and I'm sure all of you guys know, when it comes to sports photography, it's very expensive, so you just have to uh, be prepared for that and do what you can. If, if there's a way for you to save up for uh, the highest end stuff, go for it. There's no problem with that. Uh, and then for, it's very important in sports photography to have a backup. Or not even, I wouldn't even call it a backup. I mean, it is considered a backup, just say if you're shooting with one camera body and something happens. Uh, something just malfunctions on your main camera. You've got to have a backup, uh, especially if you're shooting for a company. You go shoot for them, and something happens with your cam one of your cameras, and you don't have a backup. You can't just be like, "Oh, you know, uh, sorry, my camera broke. I guess I have to go home." Uh, it's not going to end pretty well with that. You've got to have a backup to protect yourself, and it's not even just for that. It's also just to have more uh, uh, variety in your images and getting different looks. So uh, say you want to have a, a telephoto lens on one camera and then a, zoom, a shorter reef zoom lens on the other. So you can just alternate and get different shots and just be ready for that shot. If something's happening far away and then you're shooting with a telephoto lens and all of a sudden something changes and it just there's action right in front of you, you switch the next body right away on that's on your side, on your hip. Good to go. So it doesn't have to be top of line. These are both 1DXs. Um, that's just my personal decision. Don't have to do that. I've seen people have 1D Mark IVs with 1D Mark III backup, and they mix it all up. And whatever's in your budget, just you know, do what you can do. You don't have to have top of the line everything. It doesn't. It's that's not needed. Um, if you have the money, why not? So that's that's it for camera bodies. Um, for lenses, um, there's three. There's two important lenses that you really, really do need. First one I'm going to go over um, would be the one you would first get, and I would say the 70 to 200. Um, Canon and Nikon doesn't matter. Uh, I've seen people use third party lenses, but personally I'm not a fan. I'm sure they're great. I've never used them, but I'm just not a fan of a third party brand for cameras, bodies, or lenses. Um, honestly, Canon and Nikon, they're the best. They, you know, they, they do what they do best. They're just, they're, they're good. Uh, if you want to go for Sigma or Tamron, go for it. I have nothing against you if you do that. It's just, it's all a personal preference and we all have our different budgets. And yeah, I agree with you if uh, uh, Canon and Nikon are both really expensive. So I can't disagree with that. But, you know, honestly, it's expensive for a reason and you get what you pay for. It's well worth it to me. For this, the 7200 is a great lens to start with, uh, with sports photography. Uh, it will not be enough reach for football, soccer, and field sports that are a lot larger fields, obviously. You're going to have to get really close, and you're going to have to wait for them to fill the frame. Shooting when they look like ants is useless, and they will look like that a lot with this lens, with football, soccer, and field sports. Um, pretty much a, a lot of sports, they will look pretty tiny. Baseball, they're out in like third base, and you're out in the dug one of the dugouts. They're going to look tiny. Uh, so you just, with this lens, it's, this is considered the backup. It would be on the, the second body, pretty much. But it's a great lens to get started with. And basketball, perfect. Water polo, pretty good. You just gotta wait for them to get a little close to you and fill the frame. Um, as far as the versions go, I for sure would recommend a 2.8 aperture 7200. Um, this version is the 7200 2.8 IS Mark II. It's Canon's highest end lens uh, for the 7200 lineup. Uh, and people ask me why buy this if you're not uh, using image stabilizer because I turn it off. I always have image stabilizer turned off. And it's a good question. People ask me, well, why do you have it turned off? Why are you buying uh, the highest end lens with image stabilizer if you're not even using it? And to answer that question, um, it's you're not buying the lens for the image stabilizer. You're buying the lens for the speed of the autofocus, the, just the build quality, the better glass. That's what you're paying for. And is there a difference between this and the non-IS? Yes, there really is. Check out the reviews and people, you know, it. just try it out. It's, it's really the only way to find out. But that's the answer to that question. It's a good question. Uh, why buy an IS lens if you're not using IS or VR if you're Nikon with vibration reduction? 
And you're not buying the lenses for that feature. You're buying those higher end ones that have in stabilizer for the speed of the lens and just the overall quality of it. Um, 2.8 IS is totally fine without the uh, Mark II. Mark I is fine. Even without IS, I'm sure it's fine. I've never used those lenses. Um, this one, this 2.8 IS Mark II, uh, 7200 goes for 2500 new. Could get it used for about 1700. Um, but just check out reviews. Um, but either way, a 7200 2.8 I would recommend is the first lens. The next lens may take a while for you guys to be able to invest in. It would be the 400 millimeter 2.8. Um, there's a lot of versions of this lens, um, but this you I I hate to say it, but you really really need this lens for sports photography. Um, people always argue a 300 is you know good enough, and it's a great lens. It has its purpose, but honestly, the 400 that extra 100 millimeter is it really does make a difference, and it's. It's a great lens. This is a very common lens that you see on the sidelines of anything that's pro or college. Um, and there's a reason for that. It just It's the industry standard lens that people use in sports photography. As far as the version goes, I only have experience with the 2.8 IS Mark I. Uh, I think right now uh, it goes used for about 5000 I think, which is much cheaper than the 2.8 IS Mark II, which is this one. This one, brand new, goes for about 12000 after tax. Um, you don't need this one. Um, the 2.8 IS Mark I, I would highly recommend. That, it, it's a great lens. The only difference between this one and the other is the weight. Uh, the speed and accuracy has been improved on this. And, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, do I see a difference? Yeah, I really do, actually. It, the, the amount of keeper rate and images I'm getting with this is actually a lot more, but that doesn't mean the older version is bad. It's not at all. I have no problem with that lens. It's a great lens and it's a fantastic lens. Um, so you would eventually have to invest in a 400 2.8 IS Mark I. Uh, check them out on eBay. Um, do what you can to get it. Uh, you're going to have to get it eventually. It's going to happen. So. This would be the second lens, or if you want to go the way I did, maybe get it as the first lens. Um, you're going to use this w so many times. It's, this is going to be your main lens. This is the lens that you're going to go to for almost every single sport, except for maybe uh, indoor sports, basically basketball, volleyball. I never use this. Uh, that's where the 7200 kicks in. Um, so these are the two main lenses that you really, really want. Um, they're very important to have. Uh, these with the 1DX combo is just it's amazing. There's you can't beat it, in my opinion. Um, as far as other lenses go, uh, the third one I would recommend would be a wide angle, uh, sixteen thirty five. This is a sixteen thirty five two point eight Mark II. They recently came out with a sixteen thirty five f four is. I wouldn't recommend that one. I would recommend this one still. Uh, it's a great lens. It's seventeen hundred brand new. You can get it used for about eleven hundred. 1200 that's I got mine for 1100 and it's used and it's in great condition I've not had any issues at all with it it works great no problems at all uh, you use this for um, people always wonder why you would have a wide angle for sports but it, it does have its purpose to be honest it it's great use it to get a, a full shot of a stadium uh, or a fisheye uh, you can use it to uh, get the celebration shots or if a team huddles up and does their chant, um, you can just uh, use the, this lens to get it, uh, hold it up and just hold it over them and shoot wide, right, right in their face. Just celebrations and stuff like that. It's pretty much the main use that this lens has. Um, or you could go with the 2470 uh, 2.8. This is the 2.8 Mark II. New, it's like 2300. <clears throat> I haven't really seen them used because it's a fairly new lens, but... Um, I would not use this over the 1635 personally. This lens is a, I use it for, if, if you're shooting football and you have three cameras on you, or even just two, if you don't want to use the 7200, uh, you would put the 2470 on the second camera instead for uh, end zone stuff, celebrations and stuff like that. Um, I feel like the 1635 would be better for NFL and college because well mainly NFL because some of the stadiums at the end zone, the uh, football players will uh, jump into the crowd, and that's where the 1635 would be great. Um, 2470 is not exact, is not as wide, so 
it just depends what you're doing. Uh, the 2470 would be uh, like the fourth lens of recommendation I would have. Um, you don't need it. Uh, it's not, I don't see it as a necessity lens. Uh, and I have another lens, I just don't have it on the table right now. It would be uh, the 8 to 15 fisheye that Canon has. Um, great lens. You, it's another lens though that's very uh, uh, special. You wouldn't, you don't normally have that and use it all the time. It's it's for a specific things. So I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, if you if you have the money, go for it. Uh, same with the twenty four seventy. Like it's a great lens, and plenty of sports photographers will use that over the sixteen thirty five. It's all just a preference. Personally, I like ultra wide and getting really close to the action, getting close to the celebrations, and the wider the better, in my opinion. Which is another reason why. Uh, I, I'm all about the full frame. Uh, full frame gives you the actual focal length, so you get the wider shots with full frame. Uh, if you put that on a crop, you won't get as wide. So, in conclusion, um, get at least two cameras eventually. It's totally fine to shoot with one. There's nothing wrong with that. I shot with one camera body for a very long time. Um, as far as model goes, just whatever your budget is. Um, 1DX, if you got money's no issue. 1D Mark IV, if uh, money can be an issue, if that's still an issue, go with the 7D. If there's nothing wrong with that. I just, it, me personally, I had an issue with it, um, but you may not. Just try it out. Uh, and getting stuff used, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, next one would be the 7200 uh, for the first lens. Uh, 2.8 is really important because you're shooting at nighttime, you need that 2.8. You need to isolate your subject, which gives you that nice creamy bokeh that you see in those pictures a, a lot of like from Getty Images or AP or anywhere where you see the athlete running and they got the blurred background, freeze the action, the 2.8 is what does that. Um, then stepping it up, 400, 400 millimeter, 2.8. Um, again, the 2.8, it's, it's very important, especially for high school. With the pro and college stuff, they've got better lighting, but uh, with high school, um, 2.8 is it's required. You you really do need it. Um, so I hope this video helped you guys out. Figure out um, which lenses and camera bodies you want to go for. Uh, if you have any questions, just throw them in the comment area. Uh, thanks, guys. Peace out.